Lois just uh, spoke to me a moment ago, and this uh, she would like to address number eight, which is the um, funding source for the Stolva Trail. So, uh, to give us an update of where, what, what we're looking for here. Okay, let's hear first for the Trail Committee, committee. and I wanted to make a few points or uh, comments oh. in reference to our budget. Uh, during the 2023, the cost of utilities and the garbage pickup has increased. And uh, we do have two fundraisers. One is a going on sale for trail fan memorabilia at Great Way, Gourmet and Bruce. And also trail fan memorabilia will be for sale in September at our picnic in the pines on the trail fan. Um, and we are, are concerned about our budget. Thank you. Associated with the potential. Yeah. All right. 
So if you guys could just, you know, flip along with me and we'll, we'll go through this, like, hopefully. I, I know there's cookies here, but I, I don't think that, um, I don't know if that's to incentivize you to stay for the whole presentation or, uh, <laughs> or if you thought it was going to be that long. Okay. So uh, the, the slide that says, uh, slide three, PMA services overview. So what does our company do? Our company does two things. We provide advice on debt issues to cities, counties, school districts, okay. tax increment districts, things of that nature, anything associated with the issuance of debt. And then the other half of our business helps with investment. Okay. So if counties uh, you know, need to invest their operating funds in um, liquid pools, you know, short-term liquid investments, medium-term sort of CDs, treasuries, agencies, and sometimes even longer-term assets. And we, we provide those services for only units of government. So we don't, we don't have any sort, we don't work with individuals or companies or anything. It all has to be government related. Okay. And the, and the firm has 170 employees in the United States. So I won't think I'd recommend you. So to give you a sense of the size. Um, I work in the Milwaukee office. Um, I sort of grew up in, in the area and uh, in, in in the, and our office has 11 folks, and um, we're headquartered in Naperville, Illinois. These are the practice leads for the Milwaukee office on page four. So Eric Cass, he's in charge of the office, right? And he has, uh, he's like me, a municipal advisor. Uh, he, he does, his, but his specialty is uh, K-12 and tech colleges. So he has school districts on their bars. Um, I lead our cities and counties practice. Phil um, is our lead quantitative analyst. He's been doing this for uh, almost you know, 17 years. I've been doing this 18 years. Eric's been doing it about 20 years. And Brett Weeden, just you know, the slightly different color there, that's that's associated with our investment side. So he's in charge. He'd be the lead of investments uh, under our, our WISC program. So that's the liquid pool and short-term fixed rate investment. So. To give you a sense of how many bond issues our company advises on a year, we put this table on page five, these two tables. So uh, as a firm, the firm, the, you know, in our three states, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Minnesota, we do about, over the last five years, we've averaged you know, 159 debt issues a year that we've advised on as a municipal advisor. And it averages about the $1.9 billion a year over those three states. And in Wisconsin, you know, we're, we're pulling our weight. We, we do 45 of those deals a year for a little over 700 million. So just to give you a sense that we, you know, we have a, we are regularly um, doing this for cities, counties, school districts in, in the state. Slide six. You know, PMA is, uh, we have a very good and uh, long-term relationship with the counties association. So if I look at all familiar, it's because um, hopefully you ran into me at the, the counties association. So so I just thought, well, what, what have I, you know, what have we done for the counties in the last year or so? So uh, you know, last July we had our our, um, our final update for the opioid securitization. So if anybody was part of that, they remember the presentations that uh, that we put together and that Michelle and I, uh, uh, one of my colleagues and I have provided. Uh, we were a gold sponsor at the 2022 annual conference. Um, I co-authored a, a, an article in the county's or my colleague and I co-authored uh, an article in the county's magazine. I put a little snip down in the right hand corner. It's called financing considerations for capital projects. We did that last October. Um, this this uh, September at the Kalahari, we're going to be a lead sponsor at the MCA. And uh, I was asked to give a presentation on uh, debt issuance considerations and strategies. And that'll be at 8 a.m. Uh, on, on uh, Tuesday morning. So not exactly the time slot, you know, after a night out uh, the night before, but, uh, you know, I'm counting on you guys to be there. We need, uh, we need some support. Um, 
On the following page, I took a little, I just took a little, uh, I grabbed a little section of the article. Financing consideration for capital projects. Because, um, you know, sometimes places that don't regularly issue debt can be a little uncomfortable issuing debt. And so, you know, these were some of the reasons um, why that, you know, a prudent use of debt, you know, a, a certain amount of debt can, can be beneficial for any um, government agency, particularly at county, because counties have, you know, they have a lot of physical assets, tens of millions of dollars of you know, buildings and equipment and whatnot. So these are sort of five things. One, the Wisconsin levy limit. Um, you know, you can't, your levy is general obligation debt service and everything else, which is, you know, it's just, usually we refer to as your operating levy. As you probably know, being on the finance committee, the operating levy is, is limited to net new construction. So that can only go at like 0.3% or half a percent a year or something like that. So it's very limited. But you can roll your, your levy to pay general obligation debt service. So uh, legislation has basically um, forced, uh, forced you, the local government, if you're interested in doing capital, you can't really save your way to it because you can't raise your levy. So you have to uh, issue debt and, and put the debt service on the levy. So uh, that's a big thing in Wisconsin. But if you weren't in Wisconsin, you know, what are just some of the other, you know, universal benefits of, of having uh, issuing debt? Well, one is a construction cost inflation. So, you know, if you think about it now, you know, well, that's interesting. We, uh, Sawyer County just sold some bonds, or some notes, they had some pending notes, and the rate was three and a quarter percent. And if you were issuing 20 years, they'd probably come in at, let's just call it 4%. percent it would be a little less, but let's just call it 4% for 20 year bonds, three and a quarter, maybe some 10 year notes. Um, if you think about that, that is a lot lower rate than, the, than what we've experienced for construction cost inflation, right? So if you can lock in, basically, you can, by borrowing money for 10 or 20 years, your cost of that money is 3%. If you were trying to save money for a project, let's say, let's say you could put money away every year, you know, levy doesn't still exist, and you could just save money every year. Construction cost inflation is much higher than three, three and a half or 4%. So every year you would have to be putting in you know, five percent, six percent, seven percent increases, and then, and then in this last year, you know, it's gone up like twenty percent. So you would have to keep putting, you know, you just have to keep saving, 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 saving. You can never catch up. So that is just one of the because you know we've had long term in this country, we've had long term borrowing rates that are very low for municipal borrowers, especially you know highly qualified, uh, high credit rating Wisconsin issuers. You know, um, so we get a lot of really, uh, really low rates. So that that makes borrowing for capital uh, prudent. Um, and then the other thing is, you know, we call it generational e equity, right? So um, one could argue that the people who are going to use an asset should pay for an asset, right? I mean, that's pretty, pretty typical. But if you spent, if your policy was you had to save the money to pay for it, that means you might have to save for 20 years to get something, and then you would finally, if you could ever catch up with the construction cost inflation, where you finally get it. But then the people who've been paying taxes for 20 years, they would never actually have had any benefit for those 20 years. But a person that just moved to town in year 19 is gonna get this building that 20 years of savers uh, have given them. So that's, you know, they call it generational equity. And then the other thing is, uh, you know, optimal life cycle decisions. When you can issue debt, you can actually do the job that you want to do at the time you want to do it, right? You don't have to wait until there's a savings that's actually occurred. And lastly, in Wisconsin, circle back to the levy. We, as municipal advisors, can manipulate the repayment of the debt, you know, very precisely. So we can manage your levy um, uh, uh, by adjusting, you know, with the timing of the debt issuance and the, and the principal amortization. So. Um, just wanted to, to touch on those topics on page seven. And then 
So how do we how does PMA also just support counties in general or just our, our uh, you know, the local government? Well, here's just a few things that we do on a, a regular basis. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen this before, but I send out the, the staff a monthly sales tax distribution for all 72 counties. Um, four of them don't have sales tax, but you know, 68 do, but we put them all in there. Um, and, and you can see the trends and, and where you've been for the last three years and year to date, you can see how monthly results are. So a lot of people really like that. Um, we do an annual, uh, we do an annual capital markets year review presentation, which goes over every single debt issue that every single Wisconsin County issued during the year, provides a lot of detail on it. You can see how you're comparing to your, 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 your fellow counties. And then we do a monthly municipal market update, which I had a hand in. This was a, a you know, it's a one pager. And this is what we did last month. Uh, it talks about inflation measures, the labor market, uh, financial conditions, and the municipal market rates. So, you know, for those of you who aren't just, you know, digesting a ton of uh, financial press every day, this is just a one way to uh, hopefully get some insights uh, to once a month from our, from our office. So on the following page, page nine, so I, I've been doing this 18 years, a little over 18 years, and uh, and I've been, at, I've been in two firms, I've been in my current firm for five years. So this is a list of debt issues that I've advised on for counties since I joined PMA in 2018. So I've advised on 31 different county issues for 452 months. And on each one of these, we're an independent municipal advisor. We didn't buy the debt, we didn't sell the debt. We only work for the county, providing advice on the debt issuance and representing the county in transactions. Okay. And a note on here, uh, we're also working with Keewanee County on a new jail. Um, that's, that's been getting a little, we've had some tough votes lately, but it's not over. <laughs> and then Manitowoc County, just a, um, approve a, uh, is it a, pro well, the finance committee just approved moving forward with a new zone project. So it, now that's going to become a $30 million zone project. So, so that's, so just wanted to let you know, these are the people I'm working with. And, uh, you know, it's very small print, I get it. But if you look on page 10, you'll see the logo. So that may be a little easier to, to follow. Because if I didn't have my glasses on, I mean, I, even with my glasses, I can barely read page nine. So I can, I can read page all right, and just, you know, I hand these things out. This is a reference, right, for you, not just on the screen. So here's people we're working with and their, their telephone numbers and their email addresses so you can reach out to them. Um, you know, we like to be specific. So I meant, so that's, that's sort of, you know, for the most part, that's kind of the debt advisory side of it. I mentioned that's half our business, the other half's investment. This page, a lot of words, but it summarizes our WISC investment program. So WISC is um, like a mutual <coughs> insurance company that you might be part of. WISC is a uh, investment platform just for units of local government in Wisconsin. Wisconsin Investments Legal Cooperative WISC, um, and basically units of Local government through an intergovernmental agreement, they join WISC, and then all they have to do is pass a resolution, and then they're eligible to use the WISC platform, which is two things. It's a liquid pool product, so like the state's LGIP, and it has a ton of fixed rate options. Well, I say a ton, you know, within a state statute limitations. So, in other words, if you want to keep money in a liquid pool at the LGIP, a good place to keep it, nothing wrong with that. Um, the alter one alternative would be able to keep money in one of PMA's LGIPs, which is also a very good AAA rated, SP AAA rated, uh, local government investment pool, just name it the local government of Wisconsin. But if, you, but if you put it in PMA's WISC program, you've got the opportunity to seamlessly invest in the things that counties want to invest in, right? Treasuries, agencies, insured CDs, or collateralized CDs, right? So um, it's, a, it's a seamless process. So if it, let's just say you have a million dollars at WISC, 
in a liquid pool, and you said, you know what, um, you know, we're going to start probably start cutting rates, you know, about six months from now. We should probably have some of our uh, money in one year, two year, three year CDs or treasuries. What we would do is we would go out, and we said, well, that's a great idea. We would go out. We don't hold any inventory. Remember, we always, um, you know, we like to think of ourselves as independent. Uh, we we go out and take bids, and here's where you know, we take bids on treasuries, we take bids on CDs, we take bids on agencies, <coughs> and we say, well, here's where the rates came in today. Here's our commission. Here's the net rate you received. Let us know if you if, where if you'd like to, where you'd like to put it. But we get a one-time commission, and then after that, you never pay a fee again as well. It sits in your account. So um, uh, so there's no so there's no ongoing management fees or anything like that. So it's a uh, you just pay a one-time fee when you buy the, the fixed income, uh, fixed income, fixed rate insurance, you know, fixed rate instrument, and then you get it, and it sits. And um, we crossed over four billion dollars of local government money in the same spring. So, you know, to give you a sense of the size and scope of the of the of the organization that we have, it's four billion dollars of local government money, and that's between the liquid pool and you know, treasuries, agencies, CDs. And we have a, a substantial program in bond proceeds management, which is leads into this next slide, slide 13. You know, I mentioned Clear County today, the winning bid was three and a quarter percent on 10 year notes. And I said, let's just call 20 year bonds 4%, right? Well, look at this chart on page 13. And the interest rates on the y axis going low to the low, high, low, low to low, low, zero to six percent. And then on the x-axis, at the bottom, it's zero months to 36 months. So when you borrow money, especially for like a large project, like a jail, it's gonna take, depending on when you buy, it's gonna take about two years to probably do the project. And depending on when you borrow, if you, you know, maybe you're even having a kid, maybe you'll even hold the money for a little while two years. But what this shows here, though, at 4%, there's a, a gray line, because that's the borrowing rate you would have, right? But above it in the blue line, is uh, U.S. Treasury rates. So I just took them right off Treasury Direct, you know, U.S. government website. It's the Treasury rates, and I took 15 basis points off of it as of two days ago. That would be a commission. So these would be, you know, kind of net rates you would get on your investment. Right now, as you can see, you can earn over five percent um, on any you know, on anything. You know, even longer than a year, you can earn over five percent. Then it's still like. Um, over 4%. So the point being here is right now, if you were to issue 20 year bonds for a project, or, or, or as Clare County did, they, issue, you know, they got it three and a quarter. Clare County is gonna be able to, or whoever does it, right, they're gonna be able to borrow tax exempt and invest at these taxable rates. So right now, when Clare County's money comes in three weeks from today, they're gonna put it in, they're gonna earn over 5% of the money, and they're only gonna pay three and a quarter for as long until they spend it, right? Now the IRS does not want you to abuse this, so they have a, a certain set of rules called uh, arbitrary rebate rules, which means if you meet certain spend down tests, okay, the IRS says this, you should, if you borrow at 4%, you should only be able to earn 4% on your investments unless, unless you meet certain criteria. So if you, if you um, if you spend your money um, in a timely manner, so you don't borrow too much or too early, you say you borrow the money and you spend it all in two years and you meet essentially certain uh, milestones, the six month milestone, 12 month milestone, 18 month milestone, 24 month milestone. If you spend your money down according to those milestones, six month increments, you can keep any extra earnings. So right now you'd be able to, if you borrow today, you'd be able to invest at 5% and as long as you were spending your money at, you know, on these six month markers, you would be able to keep all the extra earnings. And that money you could go towards you know, the project fund. So if you really needed you know, 30 million, maybe you only need about 29 million, right? Uh, or you could use the money to pay your first years of debt service. You could use that money to pay, you know, so you don't even have to levy for it in the first year. You might be able to earn enough to, to, to pay for it. So you only have to be up 29 million instead of 
Yes. Yes. Yeah, well, hey, every million counts. Um, so I've been told. So anyway, I just wanted to bring this up. So that's that's why you know, um, this is a real you know, this is a less exciting slide five years ago when interest rates were still zero. But then you're borrowing a four and you're investing at 25 basis points or a quarter point. So that's not exciting. But this is exciting. So, so um, um, would you uh, is that your recommendation that you take the loan sum or whatever you're borrowing, take it all, or or, or is there a, a formula for spending it over a couple of years of the project and and, uh, and not paying the interest on, on the full amount? Yeah, I mean that's a great question, and it's um, it, we, we we this is a question that every you know, I mean my my whole life, right? My whole life doing this. We have to we have to ask, we have to ask this question on every deal, and we have to see. Um, it can, you know part of it part of it starts with okay. What is your construction draw schedule? So you have to be pretty far along in the process. I'm not I'm not really much for issuing debt ahead of schedule. You know right? I mean it's just it does not benefit the county or the taxpayers. You know when you when you issue some. You know, some people issue really before they really understand. I mean, a lot of people, in fact, I've seen a lot of people, not my clients, but other places, they'll issue six months before they put a shovel in the ground. I mean, they're issuing in January for, for something they haven't even, you know, they don't even have bids in yet, but they've had an author, authorization on that. So um, I would look at how much are you borrowing, when's the project gonna start, what does your estimated construction draw schedule look like? Does it make sense to split it into different issues? Because it can. Um, so in other words, uh, if you issue 10 million or less in a given year, um, the IRS um, uh, considers that uh, essentially a, um, well, it's not really the IRS, it's, it's legislation that, um, allows that debt to be called bank qualified. So uh, that bank qualified debt, uh, it essentially goes to market at a slightly lower interest rate than just regular old fashioned uh, tax exempt debt. So in other words, if you were issuing $20 million, you had a $30 million, $20 million project, it, it would be very common to issue 10 million one year, 10 million the next year, because you would get two issues. Each one would be tax exempt, bank qualified. And by bank qualified, what that means is that local, essentially community banks enjoy the tax benefit of owning it just like uh, you and I as an investor would, uh, would get a federal tax benefit from owning uh, these tax exempt bonds. So with the long answer, there would be a, a cost for each issue though, wouldn't there? Yes, but you know, if you think about it, 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 and this is always the question, right? Like when you, there would be a cost for each issue, but the, I mean, the, there's a cost of issue, and so there's professional services costs. But if you issue, if you issue it all up front, one thing to remember is, is that you're paying interest on the whole amount right away. Okay. So if you split it into two, you're only paying interest on half of it for a period of time. So you would save a substantial amount of money in interest. Okay. Um, now, the investment, um, uh, the investment environment at the time is also is really important because right now, you know, if you could, you can invest and earn more than you're borrowing at. There's not really a penalty for doing this, but however, under most you know most circumstances over the last you know 25 years, the investment rate's been far below the borrowing rate. So traditionally, so if I if this was like six years ago, you know, uh, I don't want to do my math. Uh, 2015, um, interest rates are really low. Borrowing rates, or investment rates are really low. Borrowing rates are low, but investment rates are like on the floor here. So that a common strategy then is to issue in multiple series and take advantage of the bank qualification uh, 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 tax status of a $10 million issue or less. 
for people in that twenty million, twenty five million dollar, thirty million size range. Um, nowadays, you could make an argument. Well, we could consider going and doing it all at once because because of the invest it, 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 it's 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 the invest the investment return helps you know put on the scale of we should we do it all at once yeah the investment rates have a lot to do with that now. but are those guaranteed rates such as treasury yields and all that stuff or is that kind of like playing the stock market trying to borrow money to, to get a, a return it, it wouldn't be wise to assume that you're going to get that amount of investment rates over the next two years correct they'd be all guaranteed oh they would be guaranteed yeah. Yeah, if so, you borrow the so, money today. So let's say, if we, you borrow money today, let's say we borrow $28 million today, right? Yeah. And uh, the difference between the spread of the 4% and 5, it goes down, by the time you get to 24 months, it's down to like 4.59, right? Mm -hmm. So you're talking maybe a percent a year, 280000 so maybe $500,000 over a two-year two period that you gain in excess of what you're paying in interest on investment. But what would be the interest for the next, let's say you took a 30 year no, what would be the interest over the next 28 years on the $28 million? Well, I guess I'd, I'd look at it like this. You're gonna borrow, yeah, it's, um, you're, you're, you're gonna borrow the money. You've gotta borrow enough money for the project. You're gonna invest it, okay? They're not, that's not negotiable. Now, you you know, you want to borrow at the lowest rate possible. You want to invest at the highest rate possible. Now, whether you do it in two issues or one issue, I mean, there's not always a right answer. I mean, there, you know, everyone has to put a strategy in place. And, and really, what we don't know is the future. I don't know where interest rates are gonna be in six months from now. So, you know, if, if borrowing rates, you know, if borrowing rates are the same or lower in the future, you probably want to do two deals. But if rates are higher in the future, borrowing rates, then you probably want to do one deal. I mean, it's a, there's just, you can't, um, you know, I can't give you, I can't tell you what to do because we have to do the analysis and then you have to decide. I can make a recommendation. But, but over 30 years, what we're looking probably, if the interest rates stayed at 4%, you'd get like, what, $20 million in interest? We'll see that number at the end. Okay. Right, so that's why that's yeah. So this is just, I mean, the issue is, is you just want to get a new man. You want to maximize your earnings on your interest and you want to lock them in. Because you see, this is locked in. Let's say something terrible happens next month in the US economy, just something terrible. And, they, and the Federal Reserve cut the interest rate. They had to start cutting rates, cutting rates, cutting rates. Well then you wouldn't get any of these investment rates, right? You would, have, you would have lost all that. And you're still paying your 4%. So locking them in here guarantees you a certain return. And it's protecting you against rates falling, which is not something we've experienced in this last um, you know, uh, 16 months. Uh, but it, does, it, it can and it will happen eventually. I just don't know when it's gonna happen. So, in fact, I, I had a client, and I don't wanna go too far off tangent here, but I had a client actually um, borrow a substantial amount of money for a massive project and we and we did in this uh, we did go through and lock in these rates on this construction project, a ninety-seven million dollar construction project, and that was that was right before the Federal Reserve cut rates. So they were um, they they had locked in a substantial amount of interest earnings that they would have not received without it, and they needed those interest earnings to make the project whole because they borrowed just a little, you know, a couple of million less than they needed. They needed that money, so uh, it's it can be super important. So when you referenced earlier the uh, new construction costs and debt, so um, being more than what debt service, what the percentage is, mm -hmm. where do you get that number from? And is it over what time period? Is that like a 20 year trend? Well, you know. And, and what is that number? I guess, how can I say this? I mean, I do have an undergraduate in civil engineering, but I haven't practiced in uh, 19 years, 20 years. But, um, so, I don't, how can I say, I don't even, um, I didn't look at an index, but I don't need to look at an index. So like, so you're just guessing. The, I, I, the average, we can say an educated guess, but, but I, mean, yeah, I, I just go find one. I mean, it, there's no way it's 3% over the last 20 years. No, yeah, no. 
Um, so it, in fact, it, I mean, the average U.S. house, well, it doesn't matter, but right, the average U.S. house went from 320,000 to 410,000 in like 18 months. So, you know, that's right. I would assume that the last two years has been on the higher side of that. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean every year is like that either. Uh, no, but I mean, there's, I cannot imagine there had been a, when you look back and we're borrowing for 20 years, well, you're gonna borrow for 20 years no matter what, right? I mean, you can't pay it off in 10 years on a day. So you can borrow for 20 years. And if you're gonna borrow at 4% or less and 4% with the opportunity to refinance, if this was a few years ago when you were borrowing at you know, 3%, I mean, I would bet a lot of money that the average construction cost would be higher than 3% a year over that 20 year period. So, I, I, I just, I was just wondering if you had a number. No, no, I mean, no, I don't. So, all right. So, the next section is uh, a municipal advisor separates advice and underwriting. So, you guys have never used municipal advisors to help you with your debt issues. You've had people help you with your debt issues. You've accessed the public market, right? But uh, you haven't used municipal advisors. So if you look at page 15, whenever you go to the public market, you know, not a local bank, but when you go to the public market to issue notes or bonds, and you go through, you get bond counsel, you, you know, you go through this formal process, you get, there's two things going on. You get financial advisory on the left, and you get municipal underwriting on the right. So financial advisory, so that's financial planning, right? Let's put a plan of finance in place and then debt transaction management. So what do we do there? You know, we're, we're creating the offering document, we're going to uh, set up the Moody's call, we're gonna put bidding parameters, we're gonna put it out for bid, we're gonna collect bids, and you're gonna get your money three weeks later, and we're gonna help you with your post issuance compliance, and we're going to do all these things. You know, that's the financial plan, financial advisory. Municipal underwriting, that's just uh, buying the debt and reselling it. So today, Sawyer County, we, you know, we did all the work for Sawyer County. We had no idea who's going to buy the bonds and resell them to investors, but we don't care. We just want the lowest rate, right? So we, uh, the, the winning bank was a bank called BOK Financial. Um, and they have a branch office in Milwaukee, and they, uh, they're the ones who bought the Sawyer County paper today. They're gonna buy it, and they're gonna resell it to investors, and they're gonna get a commission along the way. And uh, we awarded it based on the lowest interest rate. And it's the, it's the combination of the rate that the investors receive when it takes into account the commission that the, that the BOK Financial took. When you, take the, when you do the math on that, the lowest rate uh, wins. So, uh, so, so uh, we had no, we had essentially we had no idea who that was going to be before we started the debt, but we, we didn't care. Um, so this is uh, so I guess the next page, page sixteen. I think it, this is I put this little chart together, with this little graphic. You know, I hope I hope it you know you find it to be informative. Or, like I hope you get a sense for how the market works. Okay, here this county was county over here in the red, the, well, I don't know, this is, this is light color on the left, this reddish color, Wisconsin County, and you're, you're going to issue bonds, you're going to go to the capital markets or the public markets, right? How's that going to work? Well, here's how you've done it before. You've got an investment banker, comes up in a blue suit, just like I come up in a blue suit, shows up at your meeting, just like I do, and puts plan of finance together. But instead of bidding it out, what he does is he marches four offices down the hall and he says hey guys I got some bonds for you to sell and they're like hey thanks and they and they say okay well we'll sell your bonds you know three weeks from today and that that company those sales representatives are all from that same company so in this example you know this greenish color that's one company an investment banker goes out gets the deal hands the bonds over to their desk to sell them to their, their sales rep and then you have this investor pool on the right hand side, there's little different shades of gray boxes. So that's how you've done it in the past. So 
flip the page to page 17, this is how you guys get it, or this is how Sawyer County did it today with the municipal advisor. So, you got the county there on the left, and they have me there as a municipal I'm still wearing a blue suit. I'm still wearing a blue suit. I know, it's, it's summer. In the winter, it'll be gray. Well, okay, and then the municipal advisor represented, that's me. I'm your, I have a, you know, and I don't have any other contractual relationship. I just have a contractual relationship with you. And I only, uh, and I have a fiduciary duty to you, right? So I, I, I have no, there's no one else I work for, it's just you. So what I do is I put this out to bid. These, so your county got seven different bids today. Seven different companies put in a bid on their on their 10 year notes. So in this example, there's five companies shown here, but in this example, desk number two wins in that sales rep. So today it could be desk two. Uh, next week it could be desk five. The day after that it could be desk four. You never know who's gonna have the investor pool that's hungriest for the those bonds or those notes at that time. But you don't care because they're just giving you some money. Um, so you can see on the investor pool in this graphic is twice as big as the, as the investor pool on the first graphic. That's just because by having more firms competing against each other, you broaden your investor base and the competition helps lower the interest rate and creates transparency. You know, especially for the taxpayers here because taxpayers in Sawyer County know they got a great rate today. They know seven different firms, they know their names, they know what the rates are, and they know that we gave it to the lowest, the lowest, uh, the most, you know, the most competitive bid. Just like you did out a construction project, right? The low bid, lowest qualified bid wins. But there, but in this case, there's no real qualifications. They're pre-qualified already as a municipal uh, securities owner there. So anyway, it, pages 18, 19, and 20, um, are a, they're about a, they're about a case study. Now I did, and I brought this, and well, I can hand this out later, um, unless you tell me you don't want it. But remember, I talked before about it. We did an annual capital market summary for Wisconsin County. So what I did is I I printed that out. Um, you know, I emailed it out, but it doesn't go to supervisors; it goes to staff. So it's not the email. But um, I printed print it out for you today. And so I grabbed just, I kind of grabbed a couple slides from there. So this is a case study. And it kind of just goes to show you how, how things work when you don't have competition. So last year, there was a county that issued 10 million in, in notes, in uh, or bonds, I guess, 10 million. And you know, a couple days later, uh, a city issued, and it was like the the exact same. It was like the exact same rating, the exact same rating agency. Both bank qualified. You know, both had the same uh, maturity dates. Both had the same call provision, prepayment provision. Like you couldn't find deals that were this similar. It almost if you tried. And you can see what happened here. These are the yields on the red yields are from that county. You can see they're all higher than the city. The county should have been below the city because the county is a safer credit bet than the city because the city, an environmental disaster could happen in the city. The county, really, both have very low risk, but the county should at least price better. And this was 20 basis, it ended up being 20 basis points higher. So the and the only difference is that the, the county pre-selected an underwriter. They didn't do, there was no com competition. They pre-selected the underwriter. They didn't use a municipal advisor. The green one used a municipal advisor who put it out for bid. And we see this, basically this 20 basis point spread, we see all the time. So if you don't put it out to bid, you have, you, you can, it is reasonable to assume you could pay 20 basis points higher. You're gonna pay something higher. Maybe it's only 16 some days, maybe it's only 14 other days, but 20 is pretty common for how much extra you have to pay. And that's more interest you have to pay over the 20 year life of the debt. So um, page 19, this shows the bids that the, um, 
that the that the city on the, the green line on the bottom of the city on page one is a uh, is a different bid. So they had five bids that day. Northland Securities was the winner, and then Piper, Hilltop, Baird, and Bank of Oklahoma. C BOK. So BOK won uh, BOK won Sawyer County today, but last year they were fifth place. So you know you, you can't pre-select them. You never know who's going to win on the day of the thing. And if you look at the spread. Let's let's look at this. You know, on page nineteen, in the yellow line, um, the winning bidder was four point oh six percent, right? Second place was four twenty, so that's fourteen basis points higher. Third place, fifteen basis points higher, and the fourth place was Bayer. They were twenty five basis points higher. So um, it probably stands to reason that that red line on the previous page is that county for that county that pre-selected. A municipal underwriter is 20 basis points higher because you can see the, you know, they can compare 25 on this example. And the other thing, the other thing is, you know, you talk about there are costs of issuing multiple series of debt, and there are, but sometimes there's a reason that you benefit from this. So, in other words, if you wanted to issue debt a year apart or six months apart or something like that, well, you don't have to pay interest on that debt, right? I mean, I mean, there is a benefit to it. It's up to you if you want to do it or not. But here, when you look on slide 20, there's something you should be aware of, and that is that under state statute, you're not allowed to issue general obligation bonds directly with a pre-selected underwriter. You're not allowed to do that. It's against state statute. So the, 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 um, the clever underwriting community came up with a strategy, and that is they they say, hey, why don't you guys issue a 90-day construction loan? We'll call it a bond anticipation loan, okay? And think of it as a construction loan, and we'll take it out for 90 days, and then we'll issue a refunding box. So you have to issue, I mean, within, I mean, within, you know, you're paying it, you're borrowing the whole amount up front, right? But you're, you're borrowing the entire amount up front, so you don't save any money by having two debt issues. But what you're forced to do is you, so in this case, let's say it was a $20 million. You have to borrow 20 million and you borrow it for three months and then you, re, then you issue an, another debt issue to refinance that 20 million. And, and people are always like, why are we doing this? The answer, is, the answer is like, well, because state statute forces you, but no one actually tells you that in the meeting. They just say, oh, it's like a construction loan. But it's not like a construction loan because you're not taking draws on it. You're getting a whole lump sum up front on the 90-day paper. Then you refinance it 90 days later in 20-year bonds. Why just issue 20-year bonds on day one? You didn't get anything. There's no benefit. So, and the only reason that happens is because state statute, they know, legislators know you shouldn't be pre-selecting an underwriter without competition when you're doing something as important as these 20 year bonds. Okay, so you might be saying to yourself, well, how many counties use a municipal advisor and how many counties pre-select an underwriter? Well, page 21 gives you the answer. So this is a slide from my um, capital market year review presentation. So I've been doing this, I said I've been doing this for five years at, over at CMA. So, what it shows is in this five year period, out of all the counties that have issued debt, seven, the blue lines are the ones that use an independent municipal advisor. So 73% of all the counties use an independent municipal advisor. And um, out of all the debt, all, all the debt issues, because counties can issue more than one debt issue, 79% of the debt issues were used with a, with a municipal advisor. And even 86% of the PAR amounts use a municipal advisor. So and 76 were sold competitively. So three out of four, three out of four counties, three out of four debt issues, three out of four everything, they use a municipal advisor and they put it out to bid and um, in the state of Wisconsin. So lastly, you know, I've given you a, a you know, what do I say? I would say just a lot of reasons to use a municipal advisor. Uh, transparency lower rates, competitiveness, best practice. Um, 
not just the right thing to do, but in fact, the Government Finance Offices Association, that's that GFOA symbol on the bottom right on page 22, <coughs> they have a series of best practices associated with the issuance of bonds. And uh, based, well, the quote is essentially, everyone should use a financial, uh, municipal advisor, financial advisor, depends on, it's the same word, the same thing, but two clicks. Uh, they've been moving from municipal, from financial advisor to municipal advisor, so a little more current term, municipal advisor. But everyone, every unit of the local government selling debt should use a municipal advisor unless you have access to current municipal tax exempt rates. So unless you understand what current pricing is supposed to be on this type of debt, which is very complicated because it depends on your credit, it depends on the maturity. It depends on the call provision. It depends on the coupon, okay? If you don't have this kind of both access to information and expertise to, to utilize it to negotiate on your own behalf with the securities underwriter, then you should have a municipal advisor. So we couldn't agree more. Um, and one other little bit of uh, nuance about munis the municipal security uh, um, industry is, is that you know all we do is do municipal, municipal advisor work. So when I get up in the morning, all I want to do is do plans of finance for cities and counties and stuff like that. That's what I do. I mean, the what you have to appreciate is, is that the other side, the uh, the alternative way to do this is really their business is. We want, they're an investment bank, we need product to sell. So we, we need bonds, we need shares of stock. We want to buy and trade, that's, that's their business, buying and trading. They want to buy, resell, trade, whatever. You know, they, they're in business, it's all transaction. They need to make a hot, as, many, you know, as many commissions as they can, right? So they have people like me to provide advice for the sole purpose of giving them the best bonds, if that makes sense. I'm the business of providing advice. This is this is all I do. I don't, I don't, I don't, I only have one customer. And the thing to keep in mind is the securities dealer that they have they, they, their customer is actually the people buying the debt. They have you as they have a contract with you, but they have uh, their their end customer is the people buying the debt. So they, they have two customers. So um, this this chart here was pulled from the uh, year in review here, and it shows who won, what company won. The competitive sales in 2022 in the state of Wisconsin. And what it shows here is that, so, so just to take a step back, the one thing to keep in mind is that the people that do securities, uh, securities underwriting, and they can also, if they wanted to, if, you know, just for the sake of keeping our client, they could put a, a bid out, right? They could, they could step into my shoes and say, okay, we'll bid this one out. We won't go, you know. But if they bid it out, if they switch gears, you know, to keep a client, and they bid it out, um, like I would, you know, let a firm bid on it, then their desk actually can't bid on it. So you lose a bidder if you have a securities underwriter um, step into the financial advisory shoes and put it out for a bid. Then their desk can't bid. So you lose a bidder. So you know, if you're really trying to get the lowest rate possible, you want to get the, you want to have a nice product, you want to have a maximum number of bids. And you don't want to get rid of them. You want to lose a bidder along the way. Um, this just shows who's been bidding uh, and winning Wisconsin, Wisconsin debt since uh, in 2022. So, you know, just to summarize the sales pitch, and then we'll get into the analysis for you guys. So, we're an independent firm. We got qualified senior staff. You know, you sell with people. I mean, that's 17, 20 years for everybody there. Um, we focus on financial plans. Um, we have a we seamlessly help our clients manage bond proceeds. We take the time to do the analysis. We the bond proceeds management has expertise in arbitrage calculations and reporting and strategies to avoid having to make an arbitrage payment. Arbitrage meaning you ever, you only get to keep the extra money if you follow the rules. We try to help you follow the rules. We're very, very conscious of that. 
annually, you've got to do a disclosure uh, item. So I know the county staff here is posting documents to the MSRB's EMA website at least once a year for its annual report, which includes financial information, operating data, and the county's financial statement. And the staff would also be responsible for posting any material events. There's 16 of these enumerated events. If you if any of them happen, it's a, it's a financial, such as a, you go to a local bank and you take out $100,000 or, or $120,000 for two squad cars, uh, uh, you'd actually have to report that to the MSRB's EMA website because you've issued debt in the public market. Um, you know, staff right now would be responsible for doing that. And it would be reviewed um, the next time you go to the capital market. But our firm being an independent financial advisor and municipal advisor, we, we actually can contract to do that for you. So we, we can take, we have a little bit closer role with you, a fiduciary relationship, so we can actually do that work for you. You know, so staff, the staff turnover, things of that nature, they don't have to take that responsibility on. Um, and other than that, you know, we're just, Great people. All right. So, I'm assuming you could not possibly have a question after that. So let's jump right into jail financing considerations for West County. So, I've been working with Kewanee County for a number of years on their, their jail process, and and I mean we they just got bid in June. So let's you know I thought well. You guys are pretty similar. Let's 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 use the information I learned from Kewanee County to just help put forth uh, some um, to give you a sense of what how things might work for us County. So here's here's what I know about Kewanee County. Uh, they got bids in June. Uh, their 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 building had was rated, and I don't know how they exactly did this, was rated at 52 beds, but expandable at 85 if you do some double bunking. The building was 46, the design was 46,467 square feet. And based on the bids, they came in at over $700 a square foot. And how do you get to that $700 mark? Well, um, so the total was $33,283,000, $33,283,000. Uh, it was 28.3 million for the actual construction costs. And you got construction management services of 800,000, design a million nine, uh, furniture, fixture, and equipment, FF&E, 750,000, and then a contingency for half a million. Um, not sure you need that whole contingency, but they're banking on it, so they're thinking the total cost is gonna be 33.3 million. And when you divide by the square footage, that's seven or sixteen dollars per square foot. And, you know, listening to oh, and they use Samuel's invention. So listening to Kurt talk at the uh, Bernard talk at the meeting, you know, he's, he's never seen a seven hundred dollar price tag before, but there's been a lot of inflation, and uh, there has been. He, he thought it was actually fair bid. Uh, um, And he, and, he, and he you know, kind of said things, maybe the jail wasn't quite enough in square footage to really get some economies of scale in there. So, um, you know, if it was a 90, you know, 90,000 square foot jail or 150,000 square foot jail, it, it would have been a lower cost per foot. It would have been a lot of money, but it would have been a lower cost per square foot. But uh, that's just where you know, he feels the market is right now. Um, so I thought, okay, so let's just, based on that, uh, then I looked at, you know, page 27. I'm like, well, I looked at the equalized value for Kiwani and Ross, and I looked at your population, and I thought, well, maybe you guys need about a jail about the same size. So, you know, that's looking 32 to 35 million dollars. So just to err on the side of being conservative, I ran some numbers at uh, 35 million, which I've included in this presentation. Now, you know, Ashley and Jamie will. will could tell you I've run 30, 35, 40, 50, I've run another, a lot of bunch of scenarios. Um, but with the uh, Kewanee County numbers, I thought it was best to just limit it to one scenario and 35 million seems reasonable. How many beds do they currently have here? Fifty-two. How many inmates do you have right now? Uh, 30, 56. Oh, I thought there was either two. Uh, 
But you only can run 85%. So, at page 28, we, you know, one thing we do, we, we, we try to look at the, le you know, we try to, you know, we realize you're not, you know, your levy is not just debt service, it's operating. So let's, so we, you know, we try to help folks, you know, get a sense for what the levy's really going to look like with a new jail. Not like, okay, what's the increase for our debt service levy? Okay, well, what's our really our overall levy going to look like? So we've created this model, and I've, what I've done is in this presentation, I've taken the last excerpts from it, and I put them on this page, because I, I mean, I, I do have the model, but it's, it, you know, like, you know, it does fit on one piece of paper, at least there's other tabs, but I can make it fit one piece of paper. But um, it's hard, these numbers are hard to read. So what I did is I would take little pieces of these and I'd put them in the, in the presentation so you'd have a, a fighting chance of being able to read them. So the green is the operating levy, okay? Your, your, your levy is like two pieces. Your operating levy plus your debt service levy is your total levy. Operating is uh, essentially everything that's not debt service. And there's most of it subject to levy limits, but there's a few things that aren't, okay? Then you got your debt service levy. Um, that's your, um, you know, your existing debt plus future debt, um, less than the offsetting revenues, and you guys have some. And then, uh, so that's your total levy. Okay. So page twenty nine shows the green. This shows your operating levy. Okay. So I've got it starts in year two thousand eighteen and it goes through two thousand forty seven. Now. Anything in 2047 is truly just a guess. But, you know, we do have six years of actuals here, 18 through 23. And then I and I grow on the operating side, I grow this just at 0.8%. So, because we know you can only grow, um, oh, oh, let me take a step back. What's subject to the levy limits is on the left. <clears throat> That's general fund without the library, human services, Highway without bridge aids, special revenue. So you can see what you've done, 18 through 23. That's all factual. 23 is your, you know, what you budget, you know, what you levy for that September. So that's the kind of the line that's the last current year, and everything after that is just a projection. <coughs> so the projection is all at 28 percent, which is probably going to be pretty accurate for a few years, right? I mean, it might not be accurate in 19 or 2047, but it's going to be accurate for a while because you know, they just. Unless, unless, I, no, I don't think, look, if we didn't change levy limits uh, in this last budget go around, we're not going to change them in two years from now, okay? And then you've got the other items, right? The ambulance, library, and bridge aids, those are not subject to levy limits. Now here, it's really important to notice that the ambulance, you know, that went from zero to 375000 to 715000 but what I think the nice thing about that is, is you know, that increase you guys have levied for it and you've absorbed it, and now it should be, as far as I understand, those big increases aren't going to be there. You're going to kind of, you're going to kind of sit around the seven hundred thousand mark. Try to keep it there at least for the near term. Uh, library, although it's not subject to levy limits, it's 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 not growing terribly faster than that. So I just kept it growing at twenty eight percent. Bridge aid, you know, that just depends on the town. So uh, you probably forget, but it bounces around, but it's not great. For it. At least I could. You, know, you tell me, you got the numbers, you know, we'll, we'll put them in there, but um, just make it. That's not driving the train anyway for, for, uh, <laughs> for your levy. So that's the operating levy. So that's how I think about it. That's how I present it. Um, debt service levy. So on the left, as the, uh, page 30, this light blue is the uh, existing debt service levy, okay? That's the total, so there's no offsetting revenues in that, just yet. Then what I did is, for the, it, it, you know, the purpose of this is to really look at the tax impact, okay? We, what we have here is three debt issues. We've got a 2024 jail bond issue for 35 million, and a 2024 highway note for 3.6 million. That was due to the, 
uh, two years of capital for highway. And then two years after that, we do another, you know, like 3.6 million for highway. And every other year, you know, 33.6 million, something like that. So now I know, I know we're going to have more borrowings in the future. I know we're going to have more highway borrowings, presumably, unless the state blesses you guys with, you know, another $1.8 million a year. Um, so, but I just, you know, I've only done this much of a projection uh, in here, uh, just because it, it, at some level it's not going to fit, but it'll make sense uh, later. It, it, will, it will make sense. Okay. I basically built in some capacity for those future debt issues. Okay. So then that's the total debt service. That's what you're obligated to pay, but you have some offsetting revenues. So in the gray, there's three sets of offsetting revenues. Um, you've got the you know the company calls it shelter and blacktop. Those 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 offsetting revenues they're associated with some previous debt issues. Um, you've got some Owens Corning proceeds. Um, for reasons that are fairly obvious, I put that entire amount here in two thousand um, two thousand twenty five uh, because that's when you're getting your first. Um, full payment on your $35 million bill. And uh, the other thing is a bid premium. You know, we, the way state statute works, you know, we're always living in, under the state statute here. Uh, and this happened today in Sawyer County. State statute requires, um, we put this out for bid to the extent that the bid comes in a little higher than the par amount, at, at all higher than the par amount. You have to carve this off. You have to. You can't do that on a project, um, and that's just state statute because they they didn't want people like taking it to an extreme and abusing it. Um, you know, uh, well one percent premium is not abusive, but they didn't make the rules because they were worried about one percent premiums, right? Um, clever people in other states have uh, have abused these type of things. So if someone did a referendum for twenty million bucks, they don't want them doing a twenty-two million dollar project. They want to make a $20 million project. So anyway, um, when you issue $35 million, there's a really good chance you're going to have about a 350000 1% premium. But I built that in, and it's actually kind of handy in this case because uh, it helps ease yourself into the uh, increases for the debt. Now, you know, just to hit that point again, if you issue two different debt series, this isn't going to really change your numbers very much. So the purpose of this is, like, what 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 is this really going to impact our tax base, okay? So you got an existing debt. You can see that the, the cells in yellow are where we um, did a custom amortization of the principal repayment. So you look at the jail bonds. We don't we don't start paying the principal back in full right away, but that's because you've got some existing debt, and we don't want to like double up your debt service payments. So we just want to delay them a little bit. Those, those cells in yellow, we'll customize that, and then after that, it's simple level debt service. So what we're doing is we're just working on wrapping it around your existing debt, and then 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 once we do that, and your existing debt rolls off, then boom, we just have the same uh, payment every single year on those debt issues. And then already by the 2026 notes, it's that there's no customization there on that one. Anyway, um, so when you do that, when you look so when you look at page 31, you know, okay, what what's this really going to cost taxpayers? Okay. Well, the levy. So if you if you were to look in that column, year over year changes in total levy. So you can see where you've been. In, in eighteen, you raised it one point two percent. Then it was nine percent, seven percent. That's kind of the ambulance right there. Then it's been kind of flat. So we worked with that. You know, you applied some fun flats here. So there's a lower. You know, three percent, and then just getting back to where you were is that three percent increase. But you actually haven't moved, right? If you're just the same where you were two years earlier, and then so, what would this jail cost the way we have described it? So it looks like about nine percent, and then four point six percent for the following four years. So, I, but that's under the assumption that we take on no other debt but the jail debt for the next twenty years, because. For the past how many years, other than the past two years, like you pointed out, we haven't been uh, borrowing as much money. But for the past how many years we've been borrowing money, so you're under the assumption that from 2028, 2029, or 
that we're not going to borrow anything other than what we borrowed for the jack? Um, kind of. So, so kind of. So let's look at this. I we got some more slides in here. There's always more slides. So what are the assumptions in here? So let's read them. Gross annual, okay. Property levy grows at 28 percent. Jail bonds we issued at 24. Highway borrowing 32 years. Um, custom amortization of debt creates 4.6 le le annual increases through 29. So through 29. So smaller increases thereafter. So there are increases, but they're small. Okay. So you think we're going to borrow less money than we usually do borrow for the jail? I I guess what I'm saying is that if the only thing you're borrowing for is the jail, and and 3.6 million dollars every other year, then. Um, but not for 20, 30, or it would go down. Um, it, I, I, uh, we'll, hold that thought. We're just going to come back to it. I'll, 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 I will address it. Okay. Okay. But the last thing here is just interesting thing. Maximum projected levy rate, 7.23 on this table. It's only slightly higher than the 7.16, right? That um, that you uh, you achieved in 2021. Now, you know, I, I understand that the property values have been going up, right? So, you know, holding the levy rate the same um, still means your taxes are going up, you know, because properties are just appreciating, right? So, I don't, you know, I don't. That's why I like to work in whole, real dollars. You know what I mean? Because that's what real people are really paying on their taxes. What you know, you know. Some people like to talk about levy rate, but you know, it's just fine. But then all of a sudden, you know, residential properties go up twenty percent in one year or something. Like, well, I'm not really looking forward to twenty percent increase in my taxes, right? You know, or something because we kept the rate the same. That's not. That's not. I don't like that. Now I pay taxes too, so I, I try. I try to work in the dollar amount. So, so here, so page thirty two. And I only go through 29, but like I said, it, this is, uh, we can and do model more. I just had to put a kind of converter, some limitation of what we're doing today. But you could just see how the green basically stays so, you know, pretty flat. And then the blue, the blue is just gonna slightly increase. We, you know, we've got that fixed, so it's just, we can do that same 4.6% a year. Cause, uh, you know, what we think is that, you know, I understand as an elected official, you guys gotta be able to talk to people and you gotta be able to tell them like, what's this gonna cost us, you know? If you say, well, we're gonna do a $35 million jail and we're gonna have to raise taxes at about 4.6%, so 9% or 4.6% for the next four years, I feel very comfortable with that. That's what's gonna happen. Um, at least we can, uh, you know, it's something that's accessible to people. Like the county's portion of the sales uh, the, of the taxes is going to go up. You know, blend a nine with four. Let's call it five percent a year for five years. You know, that's what we're really talking about. Um, it's, it's at least you know you got to be able to you know kind of to, to be able to put words to a complex thing. So let's look at what page thirty three. This is the percentage increase in the levy, not the mill rate, the levy. So in real dollars here. So you look on the left hand side, you've got actuals. Okay. Um, so and you can see you raised it when you did the ambulance, you raised it nine and seven percent. You know, so that's real, that's substantial. Okay. And then here you use a little uh, use those funds last year to lower three percent. So just getting back to even is up three percent. So that's a I put a circle around it because that's breaking even. Um, and then and then what's the new jail under this scenario? Nine percent. 4.6, 4.6, 4.6, 4.6, and then it drops off there, and it's not really going to drop off because I've made some space for future highway debt issues. So I, I, I understand that, but for the because I only modeled two in this, if I would have modeled, you know, 20 years of this, I would have just had to have a different format, and, and this would keep going, you know. But it, it, it so it wouldn't go down to 0.5, but it, it wouldn't be skyrocketing either. So. Um, and that's what page 34 is meant to show you. Um, that, they, that the highway, the new highway debt says peach color on top. So yes, that will, there, I, there is capacity for future highway debt. It, and it will, it will guide, you know, when you borrow 3.6 million every two years, it will keep drifting you higher. 
I mean, this is going to drift higher, but it will it'll drift higher slowly. So, uh, it, you know, we'll run those numbers for you. Um, it, it, and we are not about not showing them. It's just that, uh, you know, I just there's just so much. There's only so much I can kind of jam in these in these slides. But the peach will continue to slowly, slowly grow if you want to do those those silo projects every year. You get, and you're, you're going to borrow for something, right? Yeah. What? Well, it, there's just always something. You have all this capital here, right? You have buildings, boilers, highway shops. I mean, you know, you just never know, right? Um, so that that peach will just kind of kind of continue to grow. So, um, so that, that's the end of my presentation. Now, I did bring some stuff to just hand out if you guys are interested, like, you know, I'm actually gonna tell you to take it back to Milwaukee. Uh, so this capital market step year in review, this has got that, um, the, the detailed behind that case study, the, all the numbers behind, you know, the two, you know, I said 70, when I say 73% or 75% or 78% or how many vehicles left, like I literally have every single year in here, every single net issue, every single county. Like it's all here. It's it's tabulated for you. Um, I uh, um, even though I, I did this from uh, the cobblestone in, 28 miles away. Um, I do have the Sawyer County results of sale. So you want to see what Sawyer County got from us today and how the bidders work and how this process works. I got these here right here, and then um, I think that's enough. I did. I won't even bother handing this out unless someone's asking for it. Uh, but I do have the, as an appendix to this, it was too fat to put a staple in it. Um, we do actually keep track of all the bidding results um, from every county debt issue in 2000. I, I do it every year, but this is the 2022. So if you wanna know, I, you know, this county got bids, well, how, how do I know we're gonna get bids? Uh, maybe there aren't gonna be any bids that day. Well, there are. And here's every single one to take a look at it. You can see, I mean, it's, you know, whatever, pick anything. Is that the one I see Florida get that long ago? No, that's for the shared revenue. Okay. Okay. I right. have a question for you too, Brian, just being we're on this, like this graph here on 34. The other way elephant in the room here, someday we're gonna have to do some more projects down here. So based on what, you know, if we were to stay somewhat steady on the highway borrowing, mm -hmm. and we were to spend 35, where would you see where the county gets in in this next capital project they'll bring to the bank? Because uh, a, a highway shop is probably going to be in the future. I don't know if it's going to make place next to a city or not. I guess what I would say is this. I mean, I, I can model that stuff out for you. Um, you know. They rated number two on our building study, and it was a, it was a real close tie. Or yeah. It was a real close second to our well, here's how I guess here's if here I guess here's how I would think about things. Um, I know what you don't want to do. You don't want to have you know there's places that just won't touch a project for yeah you know, they just they wait a generation when they should have been doing a project right. You don't want to have to have two buildings that are that are literally failing at the same time and need to go out for sixty million bucks. Because I've seen that happen. Um, you don't want to do it. Um, you know, you 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 know, counties. You know, you, you don't have an option of being in business. You're in business, all right. You're in business in perpetuity. Um, I would, I would try. I would try to stagger these out the best you can. Obviously, if you can go ten years between buildings, that's the best. Okay, so. So, and with, you know, and with the price increases that we've seen, it probably makes sense to, if you need one, and you've got some debt falling off, to do, to do one of whatever priority one now, and then you can think about doing another building in 10 years. If you can wait 15, if you can buy any year past 10, it, it, it benefits you, okay? But if you're, put, if you're putting together, um, annual rate increases that don't cross 5% on the levy. Um, and that's getting absorbed somewhat by new construction and stuff, um, which is not a lot of, but you know, 20%. Um, I think that's the best you can do. I mean, I think you, you want, I mean, I, if I was a taxpayer and my 
that county tax you went up five percent every year but i know you're putting a ton of buildings in there i mean as far as i'm concerned you're managing the gas the best you can and you're, you're doing uh you're making you, you know you're you're thoughtfully planning this out and you're just doing the, the, the best job you can i mean it'd be great if my taxes went down or you were levying less in dollars but that's just not going to happen um for a, for a long for a long time you know i guess because right operations are growing less you've got you know you've got I mean, if you have $35 million jail, you probably have, I don't know, it's what, $25 million highway bill? I mean, so, and that's today's dollars. And 10 years from now, it'll probably be 25. Okay. I think we had quotes when we were looking at this in the next 20 years. Okay, well, so well. So, so it could easily be, you know. Yeah. And then if you don't start this project for two years, now you're looking at 12 years. Yeah, yeah. So. I guess I'd say is I, I just try not to have them land on each other. And if you try not to have them land on each other, you know, then you can keep your levy increases at, let's call them less than 5%. That's the plan. Aren't we also constrained by taxing uh, capital borrowing? Uh, you are. The, the state statute limits borrowing to 5% of your equalized value. Right. And you guys are at, I can put it in here. Yeah. Yeah. So you're at the billion set the sixteen point five. No, one for sure, but seventy. The seventy range. So one of the presentations just came up with a max of seventy, but that was something after. You know, I get I get nervous in front of people. I always do it in my. That's 80, 80 million now. Okay. But, uh, but if you, right now we're at, uh, you know, I think we are something more in the neighborhood of five, uh, five or six million, which is a pretty small percentage. But the higher the percentage goes, the lower your bond levy is, isn't it? Well, yes, but you're, if you get a $35 million jail, and you had, if at that time, uh, I have that number right here, sorry, I don't, I think it's, uh, uh, yeah, so you're at, yeah, you're at 9.6, uh, 23 will be gone, 24 will be gone, so that's almost 4 million. Um, yeah, you'll be down about 6 and 6.6 million, I think, when you, when you issue these bonds. But, uh, so no, the, the, if, you, if you borrow for one big project, this will not affect your bond rate whatsoever. Because, um, or at least, unless you were at the margin for some reason, it, you're not running to any capacity issue. Well, um, if you got if you take the six million plus the thirty five million, in two years that's fifty percent. Yep. That's going to be pretty substantial, isn't it? Um, it is. It, it's. I would say not really. I mean. It, it kind of depends. The problem is, it's like it's only substantial if you've got another building project that's going to follow on the heels of it. Like rating agencies understand that counties are very um, infrequent issuers of debt for the most part, except for the biggest ones. So it's so it's lumpy. So you you issue hardly anything, and then you got to issue forty million, and, and they get that. But the idea is that you just can't go issue another point. <laughs> you, you, do the, you do it once and they understand that and that's proper planning. And then you gotta make some capacity. Then you gotta, like you gotta go 10 years or 12 years, hopefully at least 10 years, you know, without having to do another building. So, um, but you know, 10 years goes by quicker than any of us wanna really admit. So, you know, you wait five, six years, right? Um, uh, you wait five, six years, and then all of a sudden you start your planning process, and then, you know, you're right there. You're going to be right at 10 years before you know it. Um, so, uh, and I think that kind of uh, planning, it gives like, it sets expectations. You don't have to revisit, are we going to do highways this year? No, we're not. We're, the plan is this 10 years, you better make it, you better make it work, right? You better, you know, keep up on the L&M. It better last another 10 years, but then after that, the plan is we're gonna start talking about it. So we're, we're, we're really good.
it's a it's a grim picture. <laughs> All around. Got 3.6 million every other year for highway. You can't keep that up. You're not. You're borrowing more than we're paying back. We're going further and further in debt. Yeah, I don't know how long they can borrow at that rate for this project. It's been more like the last couple. I think more like 1.25, and then so we borrow. We borrow like three million every other year. Two and a half would be for highway, and then the rest would be for other. Yeah, now that's wishful thinking to borrow. Mm -hmm. But what are you know our operating levy and it? Going up with the cost that every other cost is rising, you know, 0.8 percent doesn't even cover you know the wage increases that employees or health insurance increases, utility increases. Come on. We have a lot of things to address. I mean, highway is going to be asked for some more equipment this year. They put three pickups, I believe, down this year due to bad drain system. Due to four hours. Well, they don't need those. You know, roughly speaking, you can kind of back into that, right? If you if you borrow three million dollars every other year, right, and you do it in perpetuity, you know, it will just level off. Like it doesn't because you're gonna pay it back over ten years. So it grows in year one, it grows in year three, it grows in year five. Or let's call it year two, four, six, eight, ten. It grows, but then after that, one debt issue falls off, a new debt issue comes on. So it, it, it's just like a step, you know, you go, you know, five steps, boom, 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 and then it, it stops. So you would never, if as long as you're not increasing the borrowing amount, it will just level out at a certain amount. And it's almost like part of your operating levy at that point. But then if you stop borrowing, it will decrease. Oh, 100%, yeah. Yeah, it's just, you have to have super pay grades, so. But up front, super pay grades. standard fee table so it'd be like I mean I guess what I would say is this how could I put this in perspective uh, you would pay over what you'd pay at least one percent okay to do uh, we'll call it the municipal uh, it would be roughly one percent okay is what would the cost for sort of the, remember this table here where there's two pieces? So we would tell you our fee before we, we went into this. But when you look at this, this is uh, essentially what you, so the banking and the underwriting would be 1%. So our fee, depends on the size of the issue, is, is very small compared to that. The largest fee is municipal underwriting, okay? So we would be, Two point two percent, something like that. I, we, I, it depends on the size of the issue. Take a look at it, and then uh, underwriting would be like point eight percent. So that, that say, for example, that two point two percent is that a one time fee or is that yearly? No, no, just we, we get a one time issue. consultant fee. We tell you what it is before we we go. I mean, it just depends if you're issuing. You know, our fee doesn't. Um, it's not like a constant percent. So I can't tell you, it depends on the size of the issue. We have a little table. Yeah. So it might be less on a bigger project and a little more on a smaller uh, Yeah, yeah, project. yeah, exactly. Right, because if you should, you know, we do a certain amount of work on any deal, whether whether it was, you know, 20 million or, or, or 200 million, right? And, but underwriting tends to, uh, 
Um, what I guess what I would say is this: for in the back of your mind, if you think about like people working in the state of Wisconsin, what what are they charging when they combine them together? Um, it can it's the most common number is one percent. I've seen one and a half percent. Okay, that's obscene. I've seen less than one percent. You know, that's not too bad. One percent is is typically what's charged. And I'm not. That's typically what's charged. I'm not saying that that's a good deal for you, because I've given you like a lot of reasons you do want to put this out to bid. But you should sort of understand what does this cost if you were just to be approached by somebody. In the typical number is one percent. It'd be very close to that. But I, I guess you're saying one percent, which we'll assume that's what it is. But that bond issue is appears to come you. It's okay. And you're doing the follow up work that we need on too, mm -hmm. as far as compliance. Is there no additional charge for that? So our typically what we do. Well, two things. Um, people borrow from time to time. So, absolutely, I go some years is where I do a lot of work and there's no revenue into the firm. But you know, a year or two later, you borrow 3.6 million for Iowa, right? And then I get a fee. Um, the, uh, what we typically do is we actually have to do this under a separate contract just because we're regulated, but we typically charge $1,000 a year to do that extra service. So, I mean, um, there was a time when we just did it for free, uh, but you know the way that we interpret the regulations, we have to have a separate contract. Uh, so we just put a, a, you know what I consider is a small amount, a de minimis amount on the on the contract, thousand dollars a year, uh, just to do that. And then we just and then we get a one time fee. Uh, uh, so oh well, I'll give you a perfect example. You know. Sawyer County sold four million today. So our fee for that was eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. Okay. You know, that's a matter of fact. <laughs> so you're borrowing three point six million, eighteen thousand five hundred dollars. So there you go. Uh, what's today's numbers? What's today's numbers? Uh, what's today's numbers? What do you mean? I mean a year from now things will be a little bit um, right. Yeah, I mean we're not changing our fees all that often, right? I mean, um, it's kind of, that's kind of a minimum fee, and that's kind of falling into the minimum fee category. So, um, you know, sure, that, that fee is good for, you know, put that in the revenue. That fee's good for the next six years. Oh. Six years. I just signed this. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'd love to, I'd love to, yeah. That'd be great. Would love to do. So anyway, I know you have other topics. I'll quick hand this out and I'll get out of your hair. Um, so you bet. So yeah. Yep. Yes, it's a contract. Yep. Always a good time. Is this is the capital markets presentation? That's our, that's the one the case study in it. And uh, data, data, data. What's our bond rate now? Uh, uh, no, that's coming last. All right. yeah. the best, best for last. Yeah. <laughs> you needed some kindling here. <laughs> no, I like that part so. That thing. <laughs> well, someone gave me the opportunity to hand it out, so. Alright, I'm not leaving for next year. Alright. Eve's got a very. Yeah, I think it's a good thing. So what you would probably find, and this is just another, you know, always nuances here, um, is that 
You know, there's there's basically. Well, take a look at the Sawyer County presentation. It shows the rating age, the ratings in line. A plus. So you guys are A plus, which is just one notch. Okay, and um, the Sawyer County double A three. So that's just one notch below Sawyer County. Um, and uh, I think what you would find is that if you were to go out with a, a um, if you were to go out for a thirty-five million dollar debt issue. Um, there'd be, uh, oh, for over 20 years, there'd be a very good chance that what we'll, what we would do um, is that we would, uh, uh, there are uh, insurance companies that will insure the repayment of your principal and interest to the investor, and they charge a pretty, they charge a pretty, I guess I would say it's a pretty modest fee for that, because they know you're a good credit, okay? So those insurance companies are rated double A. So what we do is because, in, and we totally believe in market forces, right? So what we do is we, if we were taking you guys out to bid, we would, we would, uh, and you were rated A plus or anywhere in the single A range. What we would do is we would uh, approach a, a couple of insurance companies. We would send them your in financial information, and we would ask for them to get you pre-qualified. Okay. So they would do their due diligence, they would analyze what it costs, and they would, and it would be something like this. Um, you know, oh, our fee would be um, $200,000. That sounds like a lot of money, right? But when we do the math on how much interest you're gonna save over the life of the bond, you might be saving like $600,000 in interest. And when you present value that six hundred thousand dollars over time, it's a lot higher than two hundred thousand. So, um, and if it's not, and, and what we do is, um, because of the bidding process, some underwriters, you know, that they'll choose to do it with insurance or without insurance. They'll ask one group of investors, "What do you? What, we've got Russ County with insurance. We got Russ County without insurance. Give us what you'll do on it." And then another company will do that to a different set of investors. And another company will do that to a different set of investors. And then we're going to find out who wins at the end of the day, right? Does, uh, are, are there certain investors who really value that insurance and they'll take a much, much lower rate? You know, something to save you, you know, just like I said in this example, 600000 over the life of the 20 year bond. Well, to save 600000 in the future, I'll spend 200000 today. They don't know what such a thing as insurance company either. Insuring your your bond. Yeah. Why? Why would right. county? Well, you can't. Well, the whole thing is you got to. How they would end up paying on a county bond? You can't. I mean, well, what they do. We have to pay our bond. Yes. Person. <laughs> I know this is Wisconsin. We pay our debts. It's foreign to us, right? Uh, not every state operates like this. Not every. You know they. They would not really be in business if the whole world just operated like that. Like Illinois. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Uh, so what they would do is they like, it's not really made for geo bonds. They're happy to do it. You can imagine a revenue bond that's coming in, into play, like a water utility. Um, a water utility has a massive client and a client goes out of business. Like I don't, Pontiac, Michigan, I, I don't know this. I'm just making it up. You know, they used to have that, that big uh, car factory there. Uh, General Motors, right? Well, imagine that's closed down. You have a water treatment plant that's you're selling them all this water, and all of a sudden you don't have any revenue, so you got all these bonds to build the infrastructure. That's kind of an example where that could happen for government. But no, what they do is they guarantee the payment of principal and interest. Okay? But what they really do is you miss your payment, they call you up, you're going to pay it. Like, oh, we can't, sorry. So they quickly pay bondholders, and then they're like, well, we're coming after you. you know? So it's basically you're buying insurance, investors are buying insurance. To really just it's almost like an interruption insurance because you're going to pay um it just you could be late for some reason some crazy reason and investors just don't want anybody to be late so they're willing to like well i'll take 20 basis points less or something like that on this deal just so i know i don't have to worry about getting paid on time and that's just how it works so um and it, and it only and it only works because the economics work right they would not be in business unless the issuer, you who's purchasing this, unless you 
saw the economic value of purchasing insurance through lower rates. Um, that's the only way it, it would make sense. So they, uh, the market, you know, the market forces, right? Here's the insurance, here's our fee. If it doesn't work, don't buy it. Just issue as a straight A plus rating. additional racks to go in. It only came with one rack on each side and when you cook for 100 kids, you want to cook more, you know, 100 so kids what, worth of food. In addition to or what? I'm not, don't thing? worry about that. That Don't worry about that. Um, so if you want me to go a little longer into it, last year we had gotten a stove. Um, it didn't have electronic ignition. So then this year we got a stove and it it does have electronic ignition, um, but with that feature, it is much more pricey. Last year, we had budgeted $5,000 for it. This year, I mean, this all happened after budget was done for this year, so there's nothing budgeted for it this year. So if we take it out of the budget this year, um, we will be over. Um, so I came to property on June 9th and they approved the additional 3,000 out of budget, but at that point, we were already looking like we were 7% over budget. But once the Bell Skies Tree Service got transferred in there, we're looking a little better, but um, it's just an unbudgeted expense. It was, it's a very old stove. It was no longer working. We had to replace it. And it was just unfortunate how it all happened. But that's the last commercial appliance at Trails End. Everything is upgraded, so. Okay, why don't you do that again? But we, we bought a stove last year. We did, but we did not get billed for it because um, we bought it and then we didn't get it until camp closed. Okay. Um, and then we realized we hooked up the gas and everything, there was no electronic ignition, which is unsafe um, when you and have a ride. you got budgeted, you said around 5,000 for it? Yes, 5,000. So we're asking for an additional 3,300 or that 5,000, where did that go from last year? Yeah, it got spent on other things because we never got a bill for it. So does that get spent in the trail end budget? Or 100%. did that go back to into the general fund because it was budgeted for stove? No, it didn't. Um, actually, um, $7,548.82 wound up transferring the maintenance for all the work out there. That was unbudgeted. That was far bigger than any Is that other. Because of all the trees falling and stuff? No, and stuff? no, it had nothing to do with it. It was all the mowing and the time maintenance crew is out there. And so uh, when the person who prepared the 22 budget, there was nothing budgeted for it. Um, and then it wound up being far more than it had been any of the three years prior. Uh, 2021 it was 3,600, 2020 it was 2,800. Um, and then all of a sudden this 2022 it was 7,500. So that unfortunately did not happen until the year closed. So I have talked to Jamie about doing those transfers rather than annually, quarterly. So that will work. not happen Semi again. Semi-annually. Twice a year. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. Twice a year. Um, do you know why maintenance went up so much last year? I honestly do not know. They do an elaborate part. Um, 
but the former uh, manager did his cars once a year. So I kind of question how accurate those were. Um, because maintenance and mowing was less last year because um, the caretaker would do a maintenance request anytime camp needed to be mowed. Um, so, and yes, there was a lot of um, stuff that was fixed out there, but it was not fixed by maintenance. So I honestly don't know why that went up so substantially. What's the rate per hour of stuff going out there? The 7,500 doesn't make sense. It depends on who's doing it. Sometimes they, you know, they'll go out there for a day every week, every other week, depending on when they, and mm -hmm. four or five of them will go out there at the same time. And so a former employee did say, well, it took me three days to mow trails in. It did not take three days. It, the crew goes out there, boom, half a day, they're done. They're so things are far. This year. I heard they got money. Yeah. We're yes. saving a lot of money in, yes. in grass mowing. Yes, hundred percent. And um, different staff, different cars. It will. Uh, if it's seventy five hundred again, I, I would. I will fall over. That is. Well, you think that? You think it's not going to stay there? You think it's no, going to come down? No, no, no. It shouldn't. Okay. Well, why don't we just take you know, pay for your stoles and. Let, let things roll through the end of the year and, and however you end up, you know, we'll, we'll make what, up the difference at the end of the year. I think she's looking to make sure that she doesn't overspend the budget though, just to make sure that it does, we take right. care of the problem before there's a problem. Yes, be proactive and reactive. No, I, I think at property we That's must true. do. What about the equipment fund though? We could use equipment fund money for this and we haven't spent anything out of equipment fund this year. Who were we talking though to? Um, about uh, capital, if there was extra that we weren't using for repair. Didn't we mention that at property? Possibly. Those were, I think, projects last year, weren't when you asked me about those? Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was supposed to be some money left over from. The and we figured you would probably know the most about the fair projects, right? So yes, but we still have several fair projects happening right now, fairgrounds. Um, so you don't know how that budget's looking necessarily for if there's going to be extra money. Fairgrounds? Over. Yeah, it's going to be quite scary um, this year just because of the vast amount of projects happening. So that transfer will be elaborate. Um, uh, but the stove is equipment. It does make sense. I mean, oh, really, the equipment fund sense. would make sense for the it. equipment fund. Um, you have a balance in there of seventy three thousand three seventy four eighty five. There has not been. What was that seventy three what? $73,374.85. We budgeted $25,000 to spend this year, um, but we haven't spent anything yet out of the equipment fund. So is that like carryover from before? So we carried over at the end of 22, $58,374.85 and put $25,000 of levy in there for 2022. We don't know. They might, yeah. they might end up under budget as it, as it is. Mm -hmm. at the end of right, the but if they're under budget as it is, that whatever's left at the end of the year roll back into the general fund. Yes, the, you you'll know, get it back. Use the equipment fund designated for equipment. This is a piece of equipment. So the you're looking is, for the, the eighty-two fund is not burned down. The eighty-three so eighty, mm -hmm. or it, you said something about additional racks too. The racks you said don't worry about on that. We can years. cover the racks. I'm guessing it'd be maybe two, three hundred dollars. We can cover that out of the maintenance or out of the two four nine line in the in trail fence. No, I'm wondering if we're getting a stove because if we're doing a stove and we're using the racks at the same time and take it out of if you knew what they would cost. He was supposed to text me. Um or you could do up to, you know, just add another two hundred dollars for racks. Well, I have no idea the going rate of the racks. We got, I think we got six racks. I never bought this rack. Oh, four hundred dollars. Go up to four, add four hundred dollars on the the eight eight thousand two hundred. Whatever I said. Eighty three. Yeah. And 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 then whatever else comes out of Trails Run budget. But yeah, if we have extra money at the end of the year, it goes back to the general fund. We don't we don't carry it over. That's true. But I don't think it'll be eighty three hundred dollars worth. What? What? I thought 
actually looking at 3,000. No, you need to oh, call no. 8,200, 8, right? 8, yes. Okay. Yeah. They need approximately 8,200. They didn't get billed for well, it last so year, so 5,000 was roughly last, last year. Yeah, but what they budgeted Correct. last year went to the long lost. Correct. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly what happened to If that thing slides, then all of a sudden there's something else for some other reason to spend the money. Yep. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't have the money, we do. Yeah. But I'm just trying to be a little frugal about it. Well, I can go over some of the um, larger expenses last year. Um, some were planned, some weren't. Um, some we asked for continuing appropriations for, but said no to pay it out of budget. Um, we spent 4,000 in gutters, 1,360 on dining hall doors, 3,482 on Evelyn siding, $1,400 in toilets that we had no idea weren't going to work anymore. Um, uh, 654 in inspection, um, and then that uh, $7,500 maintenance transfer. I had budgeted, or I had in my spreadsheets, um, $5,879.74 that was estimated for carry forward projects. For example, $3,000 was going to be for gravel to do the loop, um, and then the gutter. Um, so I had that set aside, and so really it was $1,261 I was over budget last year. So with all the unforeseen expenses, lack of management, I think we did pretty darn good last year. Um, so and I got a bigger expense this year with, with cleanup after the storm. It was like 7,800. Yep, but that's all taken care of. Um, we had a transfer in for that. But prior to that happening, it looked like we were already 7% over budget and we just opened. So I would yep. rather be proactive and not be over budget all year long and then next February, look like we're okay if we um take this though out of equipment are we going to be able to keep it in budget yes. the rest of the year yes put that in writing yes <laughs> <Out of equipment. laughs> and you, i see you already took it to your committee so i, I appreciate yes appreciate um justice youth and extension your... did recommend taking it back for reconsideration so well, i appreciate the If there's something you know you weren't thinking of there's some more sets of eyes on that mm -hmm. rather than just uh, our automatic answer doesn't want to always be yeah just just take it out so you know taking a second set of eyes right so and appreciated I, that you took the time you did that you did your due diligence and uh, and we already bought the scope right at this point yes and, 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 and three your, user your, groups have used it and and your committee feels there's nothing that you're going to be able to cut to make us a budget difference at this point no, um, because actually we'll save a little bit in salary uh, as one is uh, retiring, but that comes out of a different budget. So, um. is there any comments to uh, Camp Bridge? Bridge? Uh, what's that? Swinging Bridge? Yes. Um, property did not act on it. Um, I brought it to Justice Houston Extension and property. I showed them the inspection report. Um, the engineer said, yes, it's outlived its life. Um, if you keep it in use, mark it as uh, foot traffic only, which that's all it's ever been is foot traffic only, um, and limit it to one person at a time. So it is marked that way. And um, Justice Youth and Extension re-looked at it again and decided we're gonna keep it marked as it is and get it inspected annually. So some of the boards that go horizontal have been replaced. It's just, um, it's in floodplain. Um, and so it's the stuff on the bottom, the anchors or something, they're shifting. Um, but I could go out there and jump all over it and it's not gonna, it's not gonna go down. But um, yes, yes. So um, it's, it's still in use. It's, it's not, um, so nobody's gonna fall through it. It's just an engine, you know, I mean, it's, it was built in like 1970. I mean, it doesn't last forever. So, um, so next time there's a capital improvement project um, opportunity, I'll definitely uh, submit one, but you're looking at a quarter of a million dollars for a new swinging bridge. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not here 
at all asking money for the swinging bridge. <laughs> I will make a motion to take that out of the budget fund for eight thousand up to eight thousand six hundred and eighty-three dollars and eighty cents counting buying the racks. Out of what? Out of the equipment fund. Motion by Phil to eight eighty three hundred. Eighty three, yeah, eighty two, eighty three, eighty plus the four hundred for the racks. That'll be fair. Uh, the second that the budget before it goes in the negative and then coming to the come to the next year and saying hey we'd like a resolution for going over the budget for doing something proactive here okay on motion all those in favor signify by saying aye 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 any opposed say no and motion carries so thank you very much you can, hold you. me accountable yeah in thanks 2024 for, <laughs> thanks for putting up with me <laughs> can you do number six next Hold on.